Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Redden and today we're making a 200 year old apple tart and strawberry ice cream that uses a really unusual ingredient, dried bugs. Let's start with the ice cream recipe. This book was published 200 years ago so there was no electricity, no freezers and definitely no ice cream machines back then. It says to a pound of preserved fruit, which may be of what kind you choose, add a quart of good cream. Now I wanted to use preserved fruit that was made in the same way that they would have done it. Canning was only just being invented at the time of this book being written, so you couldn't just go to the shops and buy a tin of fruit. Further on in the book there's a whole chapter on preserving all different kinds of fruits and I followed the directions for strawberries which was basically done by gently heating them with double their weight in sugar and sealing it up. This method of preserving fruit in jars was only invented a few years before this book was published. And it worked, but they didn't yet know why it worked. It wasn't until 50 years later when Louis Pasteur explained that it killed the microorganisms that caused it to go off, and sealing it stopped more from getting in. The large amount of sugar would also of course help stop microbial activity, but they didn't know that. Add to that a quart of good cream, and the juice of two lemons squeezed into it. Add some sugar to your palate. Doesn't really need a whole lot more sugar. There was so much in with the strawberries. And then let the whole be rubbed through a fine hair sieve. Now they obviously didn't have a metal sieve like I do. A hair sieve was made out of wood around the outside and woven horsehair in the middle. I guess we'll just squash the strawberries through the metal sieve because I don't have one of those. They bottled their strawberries with the stems on, but we don't want the stems in the ice cream of course, so I'm going to chop all those off and take them off. And after 20 minutes of trying, I just can't get this last bit to go through, so we'll just go with that. Stir the strawberries into the cream and then what's next? Let the whole be rubbed through the fine hair sieve, we've done that. And if raspberry, strawberry or any red fruit, you must add a little cochineal to heighten the colour. Now cochineal are sap sucking scale insects that live on cacti. If you move their waxy white cotton wool like covering off, you can see the little red insect bodies. These are then collected and dried out. And that's what I have here in this bowl. If we take a closer look, this is what they look like when they're dried. They look a bit like little rocks really, not so much like bugs. But let's crush them using my trusty mortar and pestle. Look at that, ruby red colour. Wow, that's awesome. Don't you wonder who discovered this and tried it first, like who ate one of these bugs to check it wasn't poisonous and that it didn't taste bad? Boggles my mind. Cochineal is actually still used in some foods and lipsticks today for this red colour. If you just look for the words carmine, cochineal, cochineal extract, crimson lake, carmine lake, natural red 4, 75470 or E120 on the ingredients, you've got bugs in it. It is actually being phased out because it's expensive to harvest the insects and people don't like the idea of eating bugs in their food. But people also like the idea of things being natural and bugs are natural. Who would be a food manufacturer? It's really hard to please everyone. Have your freezing pot nice and clean and put your cream into it. Now from what I could see online, a freezing pot looked something like this, a tall metal container with a lid. Then it says to cover it, so we'll put the lid on, and put it into your tub with ice beat small and some salt. Okay, so let's add some ice all over it and a generous amount of salt. Salt lowers the freezing point of water, so it helps make the ice melt into a liquid that is below freezing level, but it's not solid. And then when that comes in contact with the metal tub, it'll help freeze our ice cream. People still do this today, so I find it fascinating that they already had this figured out 200 years ago. Then it says, turn the freezing pot quick, and as the cream sticks to the sides, scrape it down with your ice spoon, and so on until it is froze. The more the cream is worked into the side with the spoon, the smoother and better the flavour will be. Now I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to turn it quick. I can spin it, I guess and then scrape down the frozen ice cream from the sides. 
Hand cranked ice cream machines were not invented for another 40 years, so I guess I'll just keep spinning and scraping and 20 minutes later it's thick and frozen. That's looking good. Time to move on to making the unusual apple dessert. I'm in the fruit pies section of this book and I want to try the apple tart. Scold 8 to 10 large codlins. Now codlins are an old breed of green apples that I can't get here. So I'm using Granny Smith apples and putting them into boiling water. After a few minutes they look like this and it says to let them stand until they are cold. Further on in this recipe it says we need butter and I found this old butter churn on eBay. Isn't it awesome? It said it was working but by that I think they meant that the handle turned, which it does, but it had a massive crack in the bottom so if you poured cream into it it just would have run straight out. So what I did was to get a little bit of beeswax and melt it and pour it into the crack and while it was still soft take the excess off. I really didn't want to use glue because this is an antique. I've given it a good wash so now it's time to add the cream and unfortunately it is still leaking but it's not coming from the crack it's coming from a different spot on the side so I'm going to have to tip out the cream and add some more wax on the edges and try again. Clearly when they said it was working they didn't imagine anyone would actually want to use it to make butter. Yay it's not leaking this time! The practice of churning cream to make butter has been around for a very very long time. It's even mentioned in the Bible. Proverbs says, for as the churning of cream produces butter and as the twisting of the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife. But the way in which butter was churned has definitely changed over the years. They used to use a tripod and fill a goat skin with cream and air and then rock it back and forward to make butter. Then there was an up and down churn where you pulled a plunger up and down, up and down, fairly self-explanatory there. And then a barrel churn where the whole barrel spun and then that was refined to be like the one that I'm using which is a bit like a barrel but the paddle on the inside turns. This particular one is by E Cherry in Melbourne, it's about 150 years old. After about 10 minutes of churning the fat in the cream is clumped together and separated from the liquid. So now we have butter and buttermilk. The book says to spread the butter thin in a bowl and work it well together with such a quantity of salt as you think fit. Back to our apples. It says let them stand until they are cold, then take off the skins and beat the pulp as fine as possible with a spoon. Well the skins come off fairly easily. I'm assuming we don't want the core part of the apple so I'm just going to cut the chunks of apple off around the edges. Then it said to beat it to a pulp using a spoon. Well, there's no way I can beat this to a pulp with a spoon because it's just too firm still. And I wondered how they managed to do it. Did I need to boil it for longer? But then I found the answer thanks to Malcolm from Plantsman's Corner. Keswick Codling. One of the most lovely apples, a really old one. But it's a, it's a strange apple. It cooks to a froth. It takes about 10, 20 seconds in, to, of boiling to just reduce to a froth. The, the puree is absolutely beautiful. Hmm, so that's my problem. Codlin apples turn to a very soft pulp very quickly. I'm just going to have to chop mine up with a knife to try and make them a little bit smaller chunks. They'll cook a bit more in the oven. Then the weird thing is, they say to add the yolks of six eggs and the whites of four which in other words is four whole eggs with an extra two yolks. But I've never mixed eggs in with apple like this before. It looks like scrambled eggs. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what it tastes like when it's cooked. Beat it all together very fine and put in some grated nutmeg and sweeten to your taste. Next it says to make a puff paste. Now if we turn to earlier in the book it has a puff pastry recipe here. It says puff paste must be made thus. Take a quarter of a peck of flour and rub into it a pound of butter very fine. Make it up to a light paste with cold water just stiff enough to work it up. Then roll it out about as thick as a crown piece. Put a layer of butter all over and then sprinkle on a little flour. Double it up and roll it out again. Double and roll it with layers of butter three times and it will be properly fit for use. 
This has made way more pastry than I need for one apple tart. I'll have to use the rest for something else. Pour the ingredients in, but do not cover it with paste. When you have baked it a quarter of an hour, strewn over it some sugar, finely beaten and sifted. Time to see what this 200 year old apple tart and strawberry ice cream with bugs in it tastes like. Hmm, I like it. I think it's really good. I have to give it to Dave though, he's our true taste tester. Okay, we have here a 200 year old apple tart recipe and strawberry ice cream. Fantastic, 200 years. I love apple pie. Hoping you like this. Mmm. Mmm, I do. It's good, it's thumbs up. It's thumbs up. <laughs> it's it's fresh, it's delicious, it's Can it's you good. Guess the other ingredient that they had? Um, two hundred years ago? Yeah. Is it whale? <laughs> Baby steel? I don't know. Uh, anyway, taste the ice cream, that's all a right. mystery ingredient in it too. Uh, okay, a mystery ingredient in the ice cream. It's all right. strawberry ice cream and then let me know if you can taste anything else. It's quite nice, it's it's uh, very fresh. Um, it's not nearly as sweet as what we would associate as strawberry ice cream now, but... Would you eat the whole plate of dessert? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. I like it. The mystery ingredient in the pie is eggs with the apple, which was really unusual. Okay. And the mystery ingredient in the ice cream is bugs. <laughs> you, I knew you'd get me. <laughs> what sort of bugs? Like, light, is it lice cream? Okay. Are you going to eat the ice cream now? No, I'll probably eat the pie though. They still use it nowadays. Cochineal? Yeah. Really? Okay. It's actually really good. I like it. Now, something they didn't have 200 years ago was merch. Oh, they may have like hessian sacks and stuff like that. But uh, what we have now is we got a whole uh, bunch of fresh merch just came out. See this? This is what we call the How to Cook That Science Lab logo. So that just came out because obviously Ann is a food scientist. We have a whole bunch of things like uh, debunking cups and other stuff. Just check them out there. You can click down the bottom. The other one that I really love is our aprons. And if you can just see there, it's got an embroidered logo, H2CT, really good quality. I reckon you'll love it. And I'm going to go eat some more pie. You can see more 200 year old recipes here and lots of other sweet stuff on my channel here. With thanks to all of my wonderful patrons for your ongoing support. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.